You know, I'm looking back. I'm looking back because we're still looking back at Dr. King's legacy. Today commemorates 50 year anniversary of Dr. King being assassinated. And I'm looking back because we haven't updated his legacy. I'm looking back because we're only looking back and we're not looking forward. My name's Coach Renz and I wanna thank everybody who's here right now. To all my patrons, I thank you for being, for supporting me. And for everybody who is subscribed, who is a subscriber, I thank you. And please, if you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button, I appreciate it. But we're looking back at Dr. King's legacy, not realizing that we have to update his legacy based on what he started talking about, what he was doing throughout his time and what he started focusing on towards the end of his time. When he walked out onto that balcony, he walked out on that balcony ready to fight for the sanitation workers in Memphis, to, for them to get equal pay. He was fighting for economics at that time. When he started, he fought for economics with the Montgomery bus boycott that lasted over a year. But we focus on marching. We focus on the I have a dream. Now I appreciate his granddaughter, her, her rendition and her speech, but that was looking back instead of looking forward. I can appreciate people who want to emotionally and logically convince people that we are all of the human race and nothing beyond that, that there is no separation between people. Now, if you're stuck in that, I can't do anything about that. That's you, that's you. You disagree with me? You believe that there is superiority in race? That's you, I can't do anything about that. All I can do is present you information. But here's the thing. Our leadership today is still looking back, which is why I do what I do, because our leadership is looking back. Our leadership still wants to come to people like Stephen's funeral, funeral to break in to city council meetings, to march to the courthouse steps, to march onto the Capitol steps. Our people still want, are looking back, expecting what worked then to work now, but they're devoid of a key component of what worked then and why they're not getting and we're not getting what we should have now. We're looking back and even though we hear the siren, we're not acknowledging the emergency. The emergency is the fact that we have lost our economic power. That Dr. King's updated legacy is the fact that Dr. King was speaking on economic power. That Dr. King in this past has separated himself from brothers like Malcolm X, but at that time had embraced the brother, had understood the brother. Malcolm X at one point was looking back at separation, looking back at the white man is the devil, but then came back from Mecca, from his Hodge, realizing that he had to change, he had to update, that he couldn't remain the same. But we've remained the same. And by remaining the same, one of Dr. King's worst nightmares has happened. He had a dream. But now it's a nightmare. He thought that integration may be a financial damage, may be a financial harbinger of evil in the black community. And as we look around, we see that his nightmare has come true. We do not pour into our communities the way we should. We would rather argue over is the black Israelite right or is the Christian right? Is the conscious community right? Or you know, any of these things right instead of focusing on a common need in the black community. That common need in the black community is economic power. Economic empowerment is what Dr. King was focused on. And it's what got him murdered. Is the fact that Dr. King said that we need to flex our economic muscle. It's not a literal quote, but we need to flex our economic muscle. That we leave so much into the hands of other people. Our leadership today has been scared into being fearful of embracing economic empowerment. They may mention it here or there, but it's not ongoing. You see, the Mont Montgomery bus boycott worked because it lasted for over a year. See, see, economic empowerment means you have to go through it, that you have to be willing to make changes. But guess what, people? It's easier today to show economic power than it was in Dr. King's day, but yet we've been afraid, we've been afraid to do it. You see, they bombed Tulsa. They bombed areas in South Carolina. They convinced you with integration that it's better for you to go live 
in, in, in the white part of town, it's better for you to go shop at the white business than it is to shop at your own. They convince you that this, these people, these, the, the Asian people have this industry on lock. They've convinced you of that. And I'm not mad at anybody who's taking advantage of the situation that black people have just been spending their money elsewhere. But what I am mad about is the fact that we can't set down our Christianity, set down our Islam, set down our Hebrew Israelites, set down our consciousness and say that this community needs to shop with one another. And the business owners in this community need to hire from this community. If we want to empower ourselves, if we want respect from the police department, if we want respect from the politician, then we have to create economic power to do so. That's Dr. King's legacy. That's the part of his legacy that people are afraid to speak on. That's the part of his legacy that people are afraid to act on. And I say it's easier because of this. People say, well, I want to buy from a black business. Go online. Go online. You can go online and buy this detergent. You can buy your hair care products. You can buy almost anything you want from a black business. Go online. There's nothing stopping you. Doing it online is easier today than it was in the 1960s because there wasn't an existence back then. You had to go and shop, physically go in. But you can do it now just doing it online. So when people say that we can't do it, you're saying that because you've been conditioned, you've been tricked, you've been bamboozled into believing that you can't do it. And that's the trick of integration. That's, that was the problem. That was the thing that he feared. And we have to update his legacy. We got to stop being stuck looking back and recognize that we have to take the lessons from looking back and incorporate them in today. As a former IT guy, I know I can't take a program from the 1980s and put it into a computer today and expect to get the output that I desire. It's not going to work. And there are so many things that people don't even realize we can do. There are small steps that lead to greater steps. At one point, when I was an IT guy, I had considered uh, starting a business teaching the mouse certification, which is just Microsoft it's just Microsoft programs like Excel, Word, PowerPoint, and Access, teaching that in a small school. I can do, still, you can still do that. You can still make money in the black community doing that, and now while you're doing it, you're upgrading the educational level, you're upgrading the marketability of the people in that community. For those of you who are going with me to Botswana, you can do that in Botswana. You can, teach people that in Botswana you think you may not have anything to offer if you're a football coach you can go there and you can start a league because as more and more of us go there we're going to need those things if you're a hairstylist you can go there if you're a nail tech you can go there whatever it is that you have right now to offer you can go there because it's like the wild west it's an open territory territory for you to be able to do it don't think less and when you look into our own black communities there are a lot of things that you can do do you have to take some hits? Sure, you have to take some hits. That's building. I'm taking a hit right now. For anybody who wanted to support a black business instead of buying popcorn, gourmet popcorn from somebody else, you can buy it from me. My shipping is free. Depending upon where you are and what you buy, I actually may spend more on the shipping than you pay for the product. I just sent some stuff to New York. It was so heavy that I spent more on the shipping than I spent, than the person spent on the product. But I'm willing to take the hit right now because I understand that once I get enough that the bulk shipping rates will kick in and then everything will work in my favor because I'm not stuck in the past. I recognize that. We have to recognize how these things work, how to incorporate them into building our community. You want every, here's the reason why we can set down our religion. And this is what Dr. King began to do, set down his religion. Brother Malcolm was a nation of Islam. He had left them, but Brother Malcolm was Muslim. Dr. King recognized the greatness of Gandhi, who was Hindu. Dr. King studied Buddhism. Dr. King didn't care if you were Catholic. He didn't care if you, because John F. K., JFK was Catholic. He didn't care if you was Protestant. He didn't care if you was Methodist, Baptist. It didn't matter. What mattered is, do you have the black community's best interest at heart? That's what mattered. Every person of every religion who has children, they, they child, their son walk out the house. You want your son to walk back in. If he walked out alive, you want him coming back alive. If he walked out unbrutalized, you want him coming back unbrutalized. If your daughter goes out and she's a virgin, you want her to come back a virgin, not raped. If, you're, if, you're, if your child goes out and they, and they encounter people in the community, 
you want them to come back better because the person in the community says something positive to them, not something negative to them. The only way we do that is to change the mindset of the people by changing the economics of the people. Every black church, synagogue, mosque, whatever it is, should be shopping with another black business in their congregation before they go outside their community. But that's not taught every week in the church. And notice I said every week, because it has to be every week. It has to be every week. You can't say it one time and expect results. You can't say it once a quarter and think and expect results. You can't say it once a month and expect results. I have I have three kids of my own, and then with my girlfriend, she has three kids. That's that's six kids. I can't tell these six kids once a month that you need to clean your room. I can't tell these six kids once a month that you need to brush your teeth. I can't tell them once a month that you need to make sure that you're on time. I can't tell them once a month that you need to respect people. I can't tell them once a month anything and expect it to stick. If I want them to develop a certain characteristic, I have to tell them day after day after day after day. Like on another video, I told you guys every day, pretty much, I tell them make good decisions. Because I'm putting in their mind that every decision that you, that you make matters. Every purchase you make matters. Everything you do matters. Dr. King was trying to tell us that. He was trying to show us that. That everything you do every day matters. It matters. So, everybody wants better for their community, better for their family. Everybody wants their family to be better. Everybody wants their children to have the same opportunity as a child in an affluent area. But we can't do that if we can't understand economic empowerment. And whatever thing you do that's small, like you see these bracelets. I sell these bracelets on my page, Coach Renz, on the Coach Renz page, right? Wakanda Fell. The manufacturing team that made these is about seven people. Seven people are shipping these braces. Easy to make. Easy to make. For those who want to go with me to Botswana, you can make these there. You can make any jewelry there and you can ship it all over the world. Africa is about to have free trade in about six months all throughout at least 44 countries in Africa. Free trade opens up the doorway. You can be shipping things from there to America. You can ship things from America to there. There's so many things you can do. Never negate your, your current ability and never negate your ability to grow and learn and do something different because you can. I used to own gyms and personal training studios. Now I own gourmet popcorn shop. It doesn't matter. The two are so far apart from each other. But what does it matter? And then I used to be an IT guy at that before the gyms, right? So far apart from each other. But what did it matter? The only thing that matters is I knew I had the talent to do it. And beyond the talent, I knew I had the willingness to do the work. And that's what Dr. King's legacy showed us, the willingness to do the work. The willingness to do the work. Now, before, I, before people get too angry, let me say this. Let me say this. Because I have friends who are cops. One of my best friends is a police officer. 99, or I ain't gonna say 99, but 97% of the police officers out there are good cops. They're good cops. They wanna go home to their families, they're good cops. A lot of them are stressed out and they still good cops. But it's that small percentage. It's kinda like rat poison. If you look at rat poison, 90% of rat poison is cookie, it's harmless. It's that 10% that kills the rat, it's 10%. It's that three, four, five percent of bad cops that's killing people who are unarmed. It's that small percentage that we're getting blasted on the media. But that small percentage makes a black man nervous when he's just driving down the street and he passes a police officer. Because we never know, are you part of the small percent? You part of that three percent? Or you part of the 90 percent? I don't know. That when those lights turn on behind you, that you're nervous for your life because I, or I don't know. Are you part of the 3% or are you part of the 97%? I, I don't know. It's, it's dark out here. I don't know. I don't know you. I don't know. It's that nervousness. It's that nervousness that, 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 that when my son says that he's, he's going to catch the martyr, that I know he's walking down the street with a hoodie on, that part of me that says, Dude, take the hoodie off, man. Take the hoodie off because you don't know if you're going to get passed by the 3% or the 97%. Now, I understand there's the blue shield. Come on, man. If you can't police your own, then you don't deserve to police us. If you can't police your own, you don't deserve to police us. I mean, that's plain and simple. That's plain and simple. And as far as the black community, Dr. King legacy, the update of his legacy, is that we have to police our own. We're not, our leadership today is not good leadership. I'm just gonna call it what it is. I spent too many years growing up 
with my grandfather and too many years in the Marine Corps understanding good leadership. And what we have today is not good leadership. Now soon I'm gonna do a video about Botswana. What's there, what, what it has to offer, why we should go there, things and opportunities for us to get there. And I want you guys to listen to it. I might even do it as a live, is it, yeah, you know what, I'm gonna do it as a live show so that people can ask questions. Expect that to come up soon, I'll announce it. So I look forward to it, guys. Today, like I said, we commemorate 50 years since his assassination. We haven't had leadership like that in 50 years. And for all those who believe that they are leadership like that, step up, step up, please, step up, because we need it. We need it, it's very much needed. So again, I wanna thank all my Patreons and I wanna thank everybody who subscribed to my channel. Please continue to subscribe because we're gonna do great things, but we can only do it if we do it together. And we have to set aside our differences to be able to do this because all of us have children, all of us have family, all of us, whether you realize it or not, you cherish this life. You cherish this life. You may have goals for the after, but you cherish the one that you're in now. And if you're going to be here, you may as well make it as grand as you possibly can. So y'all have a great day. Remember, free yourself to be yourself because your greatness is non-negotiable.